Sony has just released firmware 3.0 for the Sony a7 III and a7R III. It's got three new features. One of them is Animal IAF. Let's see how it works on this one-eyed dog. We'll get to the Animal IAF in just a second. First up though is an intervalometer has been added back into the Sony series. Now, many of you, if you've been shooting with Sony for a while, you remember there used to be an app that gave you time-lapse options. You could do stills, you could do video. And then that went away once the a7 III and a7R III, they just don't support any of those apps. And a lot of people were frustrated, myself included. It would be nice to have at least a basic intervalometer built in. And well, now we have that. We first saw it in the Sony a6400, which came out earlier this year. But now with this firmware update, it's in the a7R III and the a7 III. It's quite simple. It's called interval shooting. And it doesn't give you a ton of options but in my opinion, it's better in many ways than the original, mostly because it's not so slow and buggy and it relies on the settings you already have. If you're already shooting RAW or JPEG, it just uses those. That app had its own series of settings and so often I heard from people that didn't know that, would forget and then end up shooting a whole beautiful time lapse in JPEG when they meant to shoot it in RAW. So it's very simple to get into. You go to the menu, interval shoot, function and you've got on or off, a start time, a shooting interval, the time between the shots and the number of shots. You can go up to 9,999 and then very nicely it gives you a little readout down below based on your interval and the number of shots you're asking for, how long you'll be waiting for this time lapse to finish. It's got some exposure tracking. You've got mid, high, or low. So if you're not shooting in full manual, you can let it adjust as needed. And then on the second page, you've got silent shooting. So you can use the electronic shutter to avoid wearing out your mechanical shutter for super long time lapses, or if you really just wanna use this camera as a time lapse machine. And then you have the shoot interval priority. If you're shooting in one of the semi-auto modes and you end up with a longer shutter speed, you can decide whether or not that shutter speed takes over priority or it sticks to the interval that you've set. So for example, an aperture priority, and as it gets darker, your shutter speed increases. If you've set your interval to four seconds with interval priority on, it will not shoot for longer exposures than four seconds. If you leave that off, it will allow it to go as long as possible, which is 30 seconds, which brings me to kind of a limitation of this mode. You can't shoot longer than 30 seconds, just like you can't shoot longer than 30 seconds without going to bulb, but there is no bulb option in here. So if you wanna shoot longer than 30 seconds, you're gonna to need to pick up something like this little MyOps mobile remote. I like this a lot. It allows you to do long exposure time lapses. So um, there's more about that. I'll have a link to that down below this video as well. And there's another video coming about that. But as a basic system, this is quite nice. And again, it does only give you still images. If you want video, well, then you need to still use S and Q on the dial. And those have two limitations that really bug me. One, you are then limited to the slowest shutter speed of just one second. So that's really limiting for any kind of low light astrophotography stuff. Uh, and two, 1080p is the max video resolution for S and Q. So good job, Sony. I'm uh, impressed with the step forward, but I want to see more options. And it's not just me. I've seen a lot of people talking on the forums, disappointed that we are limited to just 30 seconds. Let's go longer than that. Let's shoot for the star. Oh, that's so cheesy. I won't say it. Next up, we have real-time IAF tracking. So some of you might be thinking, well, I thought Sony had IAF. I thought it was real-time. Basically, this is an improved version. Two real differences. One, it does, well, let's say three real differences. One, it does a better job of tracking the eye, even if the eye gets obscured by glasses, hair, the face, the person, your model looks down and comes back up. It's going to get uh, lock onto that eye faster and more reliable. I got to test that at the Sony event earlier this year. It did a very nice job and it's certainly an improvement. The other big difference is that you no longer have to assign a custom button to activate IAF. If you've turned it on in the menu system, it'll activate with a half press of the shutter. 
Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and certainly a nice improvement. I really like that. But now the one you've all been waiting for, let's talk about Animal IAF. What Sony's done is taken that same human IAF technology and applied it to animals. Right now, only dogs and cats. And there's a whole lot of machine learning that has happened. To I mean, think about the variety of eyes, the variety of shapes of dogs and cats' faces, hair obscuring, eyelashes. Uh, it's just, it's pretty impressive. And so far I've tested on two Boston Terriers that have three eyes a piece. You just saw Archer sitting here a minute ago and it works very well. Not perfectly. I saw it lock onto the nose once, um, but otherwise it works very well. And with this Archer, come here, bud, come back up here. You can see he's missing an eye, a little accident. He doesn't seem too bothered by it. It's got a prosthetic in there and it's sewn closed to give you a little of that. And it's actually locked onto that at times as well. So it certainly isn't just the eye, the pupil, the iris that it's looking for. There is more information that it's searching for and finding in kind of where it expects the eye to be and, and the eye shape. So again, that's impressive and really Good job, Sony. I really like it. A couple of things to know about it. You do have to switch back and forth between human subject or animal subject. And right now, again, Sony says reliably this will only work on cats and dogs. I'm hearing some reports online that people have gotten it to work with birds, not birds in flight yet, though Sony does say they are working on that and we'll see those updates later on. No word whether or not you know, that'll be in the A7R4 or the A9 Mark II, or if it will just be a firmware update that we get in a year or so down the road. You know, we just don't know. Keep it in there, bud. A few too many treats to get all those eye focus <laughs> shots in. Um, another thing that's really nice about uh, this setup, without having to press a button now to activate IAF, and it works the same for the animal, you can assign that button to be the subject switcher between human and animal. And again, I'm seeing some reports from people online that uh, it has jumped back and forth between human and animals if they're both in the frame. I haven't had a chance to test that yet, uh, but I think if you want the most reliability, you have to pick whichever one you're photographing the most and switch it back and forth. It's a nice, uh, nice firmware update. Uh, it's always nice when you get things that really make your camera feel a bit smarter, a bit better without having to pay any extra money for them. Although Sony, if you want to send me a $10 check for that time-lapse stupid app I bought for the Sony a7R 2 system, you, you can do that. I, I wouldn't be sad. If you've got a Sony a7R 3 or a7 III, I want to know in the comments if it's working for you. What animals have you tried it on? It is National Pet Day, by the way. It, is it a coincidence that Sony released this the eve of National Pet Day? I can't imagine how many Sony owners right now are taking pictures of their dogs and their cats and trying it out on their parakeets and their goldfish and their meerkats and their... Do people own meerkats? I don't know. I certainly hope to get to the zoo soon to try this out. And I've also got a friend on safari in Africa, and uh, I'm really curious. He's going to update as soon as possible and uh, let me know if it's working on the big kitty cats, cheetahs, and lions, and all of those things. If you've got questions, you've got comments, you can leave them right down below. If you want to know more about S and Q on the dial, I have an article written about that. If you want to know more about that MyOps remote, there's a link to that right down below, and I've got another video coming soon. So, thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe along with that bell notification. Bye bye. Turn you around this way. Give me a kiss. Mm.